Hello, darling. Hello. Mm. How was your day? The nicest parts were the times that it occurred to me that when I got home, you would be waiting. How was your day? Dull. Really. I'll be better once I go back to work and start feeling useful. You're useful just sticking around the house. Didn't you know that? Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, the nicest thing happened. Laura called about an hour ago, and she was so sweet. She, she said she'd be home for dinner, positively. And she apologized because she was out so late last night that we didn't get a chance to talk. Well, it may sound selfish, but uh, she has my gratitude. It was kind of nice being completely alone last night. Yeah. Well, would you do me a favor and leave us alone for a little while tonight? I really do have to have a serious talk with her. And I promise, I am not going to get emotional about it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. All you have to do is give me a look and um, I'll find some reason or other to sneak off out of the room. Oh, well, I didn't uh, mean that you had to leave right now. Mm, well, I thought that I just might catch a quick shower. You want to uh, come upstairs and chat with me while I change, hmm? As soon as I check on dinner, it's in the oven. Mm, good idea. That would uh, still leave us a little time, my love, before Laura gets back. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Great. You will find me squeaky clean. I wonder what he meant by that. She ought to get an abortion. And uh, she said that she also had friends who could prove that she was telling the truth. I hope someone called her bluff. Well, looking back on it, I, uh, I guess we really should have. But, uh, I mean, we were all scared. So the dean gave David a choice. He could either marry Shirley or be expelled from school. He took the expulsion. You let him? Honey, I didn't even know about it. He didn't even tell me until the moment he was leaving school that the whole thing had happened. He said that since he had walked into the trap, so he might as well go along with it. And he did go along with it. Just to get me off the hook, he said. Getting OR is running late. Oh, that's okay. I got your message. You ready to scrub? No, why don't we give him a few more minutes? Are you, uh, you tired? No, no, I'm just conserving energy. I, uh, I hope Leslie understands the reason for my visit the other day. Oh, she understood. I understood. We both understood. Well, I mean, I heard about her sudden trip out of town. Since it was the day after you and I were stranded in the ranger's cabin overnight, I... Well, I... Wanted to reassure Leslie, that's all. She didn't need any reassuring. She heard the story from me and she believes me, which is very refreshing. Have you listened to yourself lately, or are you trying to sound smug and pompous? Monica, let's uh, nip this conversation in the bud. I mean, you're here to assist me in what may be a very difficult surgery. So I don't need the idle chatter. If you do, I can call Frank Selby to replace you. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you while you were conserving your energy. Uh, would you mind terribly if uh, I said one more thing? If it's more unpleasantness, I'll cut you off before you even finish the sentence, and then I'll call Frank Selby. I merely wanted to tell you that I disregarded Alan's orders about the cop to run on purpose. Figures. And the reason that I did it was because I wanted to be alone with you. Monica, what are you up to now? I'm not up to anything. Then why are you telling me all of this? Because I'm trying to be honest. That's a switch. New Year's resolution? I'm not a good loser, Rick. I never have been, and I'm not now. Spare me the confessions, please. I don't want to hear it. Rick, look, this isn't easy for me. As far as Leslie is concerned, I have been nasty, I have... Yeah, I agree with you there, but not just with Leslie, with me, too. For all the same reasons, because I didn't know how to give up. Please, Monica, I don't want to hear anything. Will you this. please stop interrupting me and listen? Neither you nor Leslie has to worry about my hatching up any schemes anymore. No. And to what do we owe this marvelous metamorphosis? You don't believe me, do you? 
Well, it doesn't matter because I intend to finish what I'm going to say because it's important to me. Lately, I have learned a lot about honesty. And it's turned my whole world around and I like what it's done. Good. Finished? If you say you believe me because that's important to me. I'm willing to wait and see what happens. And judge you by your future actions, okay? Excuse me. Dr. Weber. Yeah, I'll be right there. They're ready for us. Uh, should we go back to our professional relationship now? Hi. Oh, hello, Laura. Come on and sit down, honey. You look like you were about a thousand miles away. Well, not quite that far. A few, maybe. What were you thinking about? Believe it or not, I, I didn't have a thought in my head. I was just sitting here trying to relax. Oh, well, then I apologize for the interruption. No, no, that's all right. I'm glad you did. I've been wanting to tell you how happy I am that you and Leslie have patched things up. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that myself. It's going to make life a lot easier for me. For all of us. So, what are you planning to do tonight? Tonight, uh, Scotty and I are going to a basketball game at State. Mm hmm Sounds nice, just the two of you. No, no. First, Scotty asked Monica and Dr. Quartermain to come with us, but they couldn't make it because Dr. Quartermain has to be in New York tonight. So Scotty's roommate, Darren, and Barbara Spencer are coming along with us instead. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a better arrangement to me. I should think you'd want to be with people your own age. Oh, Rick. What's the matter, honey? I just can't understand why everyone puts so much emphasis on age. It's as if people run around saying, uh... I'd like to be your friend, but I'll have to check your birth certificate. No, that's not what I meant, and you know it. Well, maybe not, but Leslie does think that way. You know, Scotty and I had such a marvelous time with Monica and Dr. Quartermain on Thanksgiving, you know, when we went to the football game. You wouldn't have known that there was any age difference at all. I happen to be very fond of Monica. I know Leslie is never going to be able to accept that, though. I suppose she's... Jealous in a way or resentful. I, I can never figure her out. I don't think either one of those are very valid reason. Rick, you know as well as I do that she never liked Monica. And you know why. Honey, that's all in the past. I've forgotten about it, and Monica's forgotten about it. Well, good afternoon, Doctor. You're making a little house call here, are you? <laughs> it's more like making a retreat. How you doing? Oh, muddling through, you know. Hey, heard any more about Lamont Corbin? I understand that they ran a new series of tests on him, and it didn't look good, but Marks decided to go ahead with the surgery anyway. I also hear that Dr. Copeland is flying in from London to assist him. No kidding, Copeland, huh? Boy, he really does get the best, doesn't he? Ha, <laughs> must really be serious. David, I don't want you to repeat that to anybody. This is strictly confidential. <laughs> well, how can it be confidential if everybody in the hospital is talking about it? No, nah, it's surface stuff, gossip. Very few people have the real facts. What facts? I mean, what's all the hush-hush about, anyway? David, Lamont Corbin isn't just a patient awaiting surgery. He's a business institution. What happens to him affects the financial community of the whole world. Wow, I never really thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. If anything happens to him, well, the empire he's built goes up for grabs. The vultures will just swoop in and tear it apart. Well, if there's so much riding on him, how are you going to keep it secret? I mean, with all the coverage, you know, the, the press and the TV and everything, and just all the general gossip going around. I mean, word's bound to leak out. They'd have to get into Mark Dante's head first. You tried doing that. <laughs> you mean he's the only man in the whole hospital that's got the answers? Well, some of the staff members can make highly educated guesses, but it's a highly specialized surgical process. Well, I guess all that talk that I hear going around that the odds are pretty much against him is just... Uneducated guessing, huh? Well, it's an interesting topic of conversation. You can't expect people not to talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I'm lucky. I don't have any Corbin limited stock, so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, you are lucky. <laughs> like, I'm kind of beat. I'm going to head upstairs and catch a shower before Leslie gets back. Sure. Why don't I fix you a drink? Sounds good, pal. I'll make one for yourself. Yeah. Hey, that was really a fine dinner that you fixed for us. You're really quite a cook, aren't you? Oh, I got all kinds of unnoticed talents. I'm even an expert dishwasher. I just wish Leslie would have let me help wash the dishes. That's oh, all. no, no, no. Cooking dinner was enough. we got to divide the chores around here. Uh, she done already? 
Now she was on the phone with Laura, so I figured I'd take a little break from drying. Hmm. I thought Laura was going to have dinner with us tonight. Well, so did I, but I guess she decided to have dinner with Scotty before going to the basketball game. Yeah. What are you reading? Oh, just uh, looking at the one answer. Don't you find the pros leave a little bit to be desired? <laughs> well, I'm not really reading for pleasure. It's more for profit. I found one here. It looks kind of interesting. What's that? Well, there's a local ad agency. They're looking for a freelance commercial artist. I might check into that. Yeah, that sounds right up your alley. Yeah, but I'm not so sure. Well, why not? I don't know if I got enough talent for a job like that. I mean, maybe I've been kidding myself all this time. You know, I never really thought about actually competing for a paying job with somebody in that field. Come on, now. I want to see a little more self-assurance from you. You can do anything that you put your mind to, David, and you know it. <laughs> you think I can, huh? Darn right you can. Yeah, I guess you're right. I just need a little more self-confidence. I think what I'll do is take my portfolio and go down there in the morning. And what's the worst thing they can do but say no, right? Right. But I have a feeling you're going to do just fine. And I'll tell you something, I'm really proud and happy that you're going down there. <laughs> Thanks. Well, listen, you think I could get you and Leslie to give me a ride down in the morning? Sure, we'd be glad to. Where do you have to go exactly? Oh, I can... You're drinking too much coffee. Me? What about you? You're matching me cup for cup. I had a hectic morning in the clinic. Oh, and I didn't? Fine thing. Guy completes his morning rounds, runs into his wife, who he happens to love and adore, by the way. She says, no more coffee. First, you're supposed to say, I love you. Then, no more coffee. I love you. No more coffee. That's better. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. Have you met Barbara Spencer? Barbara, this is Dr. Weber and Dr. Weber. How do you do? I'm very happy to meet both of you. Hello, Barbara. We've heard a great deal about you. Laura tells me that you've become very good friends. Laura's told me a lot about both of you. I should enlarge on this introduction to tell you that this young lady is the most energetic person ever assigned to the seventh floor. <laughs> I brought her here for a reason. Barbara, this is the lounge where you can let up and relax. I'll remember Miss Fleming. <laughs> Did Laura get off to school all right? Oh, yes, fine. We had breakfast together, and then I walked her to the bus stop. It was very nice of you to invite her to stay with you. Oh, well, I knew that the basketball game wouldn't be over until late, and it, it saved Scotty from driving all the way back to your place from State Campus. Mm -hmm. Do you live near the campus? Pretty close. Scotty and his roommate Darren took us out for hamburger after the game, and then they dropped us off early because they had a lot of studying to do. Well, you must come and stay with Laura sometime. We'd love to have you visit. That's very nice of you, Dr. Weber. I really appreciate the invitation. Uh, maybe I'd better get back now. Oh, but there's no rush, Barbara. Can't you relax? I really enjoy being busy. Uh, excuse me. I, I hope to see you again very soon. Yes, so. Take care. Isn't she the limit? She never stops. I only wish I possessed half the amount of energy she has. <laughs> I think you do just fine in that department, Dory. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dory. I agree with Rick. Oh. You don't have to take a back seat to anyone. Hello, Doctor. I didn't see you come in. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to the station. I uh, take it Laura and the Spencer girl have become good friends. Yes, they seem to be. Well, oh, that's nice. Laura needs someone more her own age to talk to. I agree. Uh, did I overhear uh, that uh, Laura spent the night with Barbara? Yes, because they get back late from a basketball game. Oh. Well, Leslie, your little girl is really growing up, isn't she? A movie and Jack and...